working with your single nunchuck, double nunchuck. We're also gonna talk about the Japanese Tessin, which is the Ninja War Fan, Samurai War Fan. Doesn't matter who uses it, right? You're gonna learn how to fight with the fan, also known as the Kung Fu Fan. A little bit different styles, but basically the same kind of thing. I'm gonna show you single nunchuck first. Grab your nunchucks, follow me in this basic or beginner nunchuck tutorial. You're gonna start with the nunchuck in the right hand and you're gonna make a small circle. So your hand is closed and you're just going like this. It's real small, subtle circle, enough to get that spinning to the outside. We're gonna call this an outer orbital spin. So the outer orbital spin, you can see my elbow's bent a little bit. I'm gonna turn my palm down. When you turn your palm down, make sure that you extend your arm. Good morning, Sensei Emmett. Your palm is facing the ground. You continue with this inner orbital. Both spins are going away from you to the front. So when your palm is up, you're going away from you. When your palm is down, you're going away from you. Now, when you reverse it, you're just going into a reverse spin. So start here, palm facing up, facing the ceiling, circle going forward. Turn that over. Make sure that your arm is not close enough to smash your chin but spin it forward away from you. Do that a few times, palm back up. Teach yourself slowly how to do this basic technique. You're gonna learn how to do single nunchuck, double nunchuck. I want you to learn how to fight like Bruce Lee or Mighty Guy or Rock Lee or one of the Ninja Turtles, the basic. And it's fun to think of those characters, but this is a real practical, effective self-defense weapon. So your palm is spinning up, your palm is spinning down, and then you put those together. I did, I saw, I saw a lot of it. I haven't seen the whole thing. I've been so extremely busy this week. Today is my birthday. Happy birthday to me. And uh, my wife said, you know, what do you wanna to do today? I said, work out, got it in. I wanna work, I wanna make a dollar or two. Got that in, I had a private lesson. I worked out with somebody, trained somebody else. And I said, I wanna make a live stream. I wanna show you one of my favorite weapons the nunchucks, and then throw in the fan for good measure. Now you're gonna turn that up and down. When you go up and down, thank you so much. Appreciate the birthday wish. Coming up and down in your sideways figure eight. And I also like to think of it as like slapping, thank you, slapping across the face, backhand across the face. Thank you, Sensei Emmett, for that birthday wish. Down and up into the center line of your body. Always learn to fight from behind your sticks. In this case, the double stick with the chain in the middle, the nunchuck or nunchaku. This is my target. I went over this last time talking about how to hit a target, whether it's a, uh, a, a non-living target, a bag, a stack of tires, a tree. Don't beat up the tree, but you know, you wrap the tree, a pole. Practice your strikes coming down at an angle, down at the angle, if you come straight across, it's gonna reach back and smash your hand, unless you're holding at the very end and you also follow through. Talk more about striking in a minute, but I wanted to grab that second nunchuck and show you how to do the warm up when you have two nunchucks. You think about a lot of the great Bruce Lee movies, he fights with single nunchuck and he fights with double nunchuck. This is also good brain training. This is great for your brain, right? So your double nunchuck spin, Palms facing up, turn down, make sure you push away from you. If it's in, you're gonna bust your chin. Hands out, spinning forward, palms up. Yeah, for those of you who haven't been to Sensei Emmett's channel, go check it out. He had some great interviews recently, especially uh, one with Master Gary Hernandez was really fun to watch. Palm down, palm up. up. Oh, and then I, I caught the one, the woman who does the uh, traditional European European martial arts. Sword fighting. Spinning forward, you put it together, and now you're doing a double nunchuck spin. You go faster, you go slower, and I wanna show you how to cross them over, because I think this is one of the coolest moves you can do with the double nunchucks, is when you cross at the same time and bring them back. Now you'll see that one time you're gonna have your right hand on top. The next time you're gonna have your left arm on top. And you're gonna to constantly switch that. One, two. 
Now you can bring it back out. So you're spinning like this. This is very traditional Bruce Lee. You can do your outer orbitals. And we're gonna go over this, how to catch it in this position and how to strike. We're gonna go over that in a minute with the single chuck when we drop this one again. But I wanted you to see that basically anything you do with a single chuck, you can do with a double chuck if you understand timing and distance. That means not smashing them together. And sometimes you'll alternate your timing. Sometimes it'll be simultaneous. So let's go back out to the outer orbital, palm down, inner orbital, outer, inner, put it together. Now you're doing a double nunchuck spin, double figure eight or infinity spin. You just heard them clank together. And then bring them closer to the midline, across the middle. Like I said before, this is gonna be great for your brain elasticity training. Great training for your brain. Now, let's put this one down. Go back to the single, because I want you to see some more of those Bruce Lee moves. I'm gonna lift this up a little bit, give myself some more room. You see all the junk back there in storage. With the right hand, I want you to go up and down in a basic strike for self-defense. And in this case, it's going to be vertical, meaning just up and down, right? So you're striking here, and as you start to strike, I moved my hand from the center where I was warming up on that spin, to move it out so I get maximum power. Also, like I said, when you strike and you follow through, it's going to hit, and then because you're following through, it's going to create tension on that chain or string, pushing this stick away from this stick, and when it bends back, it's gonna hit the stick and not your hand. See how my hand's out of the way? Your hand is up and it follows through. It has to hit your hand. So hold at the very end. The chains are designed that length so that you don't hit your hand. So you ask me all the time, when you strike through the middle, it comes back and hits you in the hand. I did it too fast, I don't know if you could see it. There it is. You also need to be able to strike with the very end right here. Oh, good. Oh, I love the Karate Kids. Uh, Karate Kid 3. The, you know, great movie. So from here, all the, I loved all the Karate Kid movies. From here, hello, Kyle. You're gonna, this is the part that strikes. If you strike more in the middle, that's going to bounce back and hit your hand. So to avoid striking your hand, go slower. Hit that end. When it comes back, it's gonna do that. Or go at these downward strikes, downward strikes, and they're not gonna come back and hit your hand at all. When they do spin, they're gonna go down, they hit, and then when they bounce back, they go past your hand, past your hand on the top or on the bottom because of the angle. That's the way to stop from smashing your hand when you hit either a dummy target, like a bag, or, or a, well, maybe a practice bob, like a dummy stack of tires. Or for self-defense, you hit a person for self-defense. It's going to do that. Good. I didn't realize, I learned this in uh, Sensei Emmett's uh, interview with Master Gary Hernandez that I watched, I was it yesterday, the day before, that he trained with Bill Superfoot Wallace, and I didn't know that. Maybe he told me, I don't always pay attention. He probably did, but Superfoot Wallace, Bill Wallace lives just down the street here. Uh, Pre-COVID, we used to work out in the same gym, a boxing gym, and I'd see him at least once a week. That guy's amazing, by the way. He's still in his 70s. He's still training hard. He still looks fantastic. He's strong, he's fast, flexible, and he's got all the cool moves. Now, you did this one. I want you to go across the body and keep it tight, right? This is your center line. Always strike through the center line, down and up. This angle, you can bring it around and around if you want. You can practice one angle and then the other angle. One, two, but see when I bring it through, I'm keeping it really, really tight. When I, when I, uh, he's not, uh, he just, it's not that he's aloof. It's like, you know, 
What use does he have with the internet? He's not trying to prove anything to anybody. Bill Super Wallace, I'm saying. That's why it's probably hard to get him to respond. He's always got a lot going on. Super brilliant guy, though. Coming through and coming back. And an amazing fighter, right? Even to this day. This is your horizontal strike. Horizontal strike. When I'm coming across from the same side, this is my right arm. When I come from the right to the left, palm up, left to the right, palm down. Put those together. And now go down. Sorry, go up, go down, go across, up, down, across. I call this the Bruce Lee Triangle in the uh, series Naruto. Mighty Guy and Rock Lee also do this same basic move in a lot of their animated TV series. That manga or whatever it's called. One anime, one, two, three. But that's all it is. It's just one, two, and then up. And right here, that's a right triangle. A right triangle. And I just call that like the Bruce Lee triangle. Good. Thanks, Phil. Yeah. Uh, hello up in Canada. I hope it's beautiful up there like it is down here. One, it's beautiful country. One, you know, the whole world's a beautiful place. We live in a lot of, a lot of us live in beautiful places. Even cities. Like, I love Seoul, Korea. Seoul, Korea is one of the most beautiful cities. And they've got great parks throughout and the mountains and stuff. But just the buildings, the people make it, you know, so clean. And some cities are just pretty that way. All right. Now, going back to the double chuck, pulling them all up. I want you to go up and down, or pulling them both up, I should say, as if I had more than two arms. But I want you to add a little bit of complexity, just a little bit, and a little bit of, uh, make it interesting, right? A little bit of complexity and what should we call that? I was thinking this this morning. My, my word, when I work out this, as hard as I worked out this morning, my brain sometimes loses the words. It's because you, you blurn off the blood sugar in your brain. Anyway, texture, that's what I'm thinking about. I always think, you know, think of martial arts for three things. One, self-improvement. That's always the best, right? The way, the dough, the way of self-improvement through training the martial arts. Two, practical self-defense. It's the fight, right? Well, four, I guess. Four would be the sport aspect. You know, it's fun to, to compete in different aspects of martial arts as a sport. But then there's always the demonstration or the aesthetics, the way things look, how beautiful things are. So from here, down and up, adding some texture, some volume, uh, change in the rhythm from this straight up and down to adding a spin down and a spin up, that changes now the rhythm but also the volume, the way it looks to somebody who might be watching you. So whether it's a tournament or even just for your own satisfaction to see that you're learning new techniques and you're starting to grow, add that spin. And then you can double the spin. You can triple the spin. You just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, right? But try that. When you do your training with the double chucks and you go down and up, and then let's add more complexity, right? Start to split that strike. Striking down and up at the same time. And then add, I gotta focus and concentrate. I'm gonna smack myself on this one. Put your, let me see if I can do it sideways. So if I go down and up, down and up, and you could even go, um, forward, forward, same time, and then you can do alternating, and it's just adding complexity. It's good for your brain. It makes your brain grow. You get out of your comfort zone, and then go to your Bruce Lee triangle, same time, alternating which hands on top, one hand and then the other hand, and then alternating. And it takes a little bit more thought and I'm smacking myself pretty good on that one, but you get the basic idea. Let me see if I can get better lighting. It's... <laughs> I talk about this all the time, but you watching my videos brings in a little bit of income. The, the volume adds up and it's not a lot of money, but it's enough to 
keep the lights on, to pay the electric bill, the Florida Power and Light. But sometimes it's not enough to keep all of the light bulbs on. <laughs> the light bulbs burn out and I don't always have the, the, uh, the money to replace it every single month. I have to kind of wait a little bit. Uh, thank you. It's my pleasure. Anyway, as I said before, it's my birthday today. This is my birthday spin. I love to spin on my birthday. I love to spend time with you on my birthday. And I said, I want to get one of these done today. So hello, it's good to see you too. All right, so we're using two chucks. We're using a single chuck. And I promised you in this one, we would talk about how Bruce Lee uses his chucks because I want you to train like Bruce Lee. And not because Bruce Lee was that great. He was a great guy, he's a great martial artist. Uh, or Mighty Guy or Rock Lee, but because the moves that they used are really great moves for self-defense especially. And I'm going to come back to those, but I wanted to show you one of my favorite, thank you, thank you for the birthday wishes, show you one of my favorite martial arts weapons that's disguised as the everyday fan, right? And it works like a fan. You can see, it's blowing my little hair there. It cools you down, but... When you learn how to use it properly, it becomes a very effective defensive weapon. You can throw it in so many directions. You can snap it out, throw it, and then some of them, like the Japanese war fans, they have the little uh, slicing things there. Yeah, for sure. Dan and Asanto, uh, to what Sensei Emmett's saying to, to prove his point, if you go to Game of Death, you watch Game of Death, and, and Bruce Lee's fighting against the Asian, the other Asian man, who is Dan Inosanto, is a young guy who became a student of Bruce Lee and is still considered to be the top Bruce Lee student in America. He's in his 80s now, still giving seminars, a lot like uh, Superfoot Bill Wallace. Sometimes you'll see them both at the same martial arts event and you take both of their seminars. Still to this day, it's really cool. But uh, Dan Inosanto goes through and he's doing all of these cool techniques, tricks, techniques, whatever you want to call them, and Bruce Lee's doing the basics. And Bruce Lee never did more than the basics. And that doesn't mean that he's wrong, but when you're a great martial artist, you, you understand it's all in the basics. And then if you think about camera angles and his look and all that stuff, that's all they had to really do. But the, to what uh, Sensei Emmett's saying, Bruce, or Dan and Santos doing all these crazy great tricks. And then the Ninja Turtles, they do so many more really crazy tricks. And then if you look at some of the tournaments now, some of the athletes out there who are doing, especially the hyper pro athlete type, those kind of guys, the martial arts tricking, those guys do some amazing stuff with chucks. All right, so let's talk about the fighting fan though. This is, uh, it's made out of rattan or bamboo. I think this is probably rattan. It's just got the little thing there and you have three striking surfaces here. And you have four, three, at least three kinds of strikes. I wanted, I had to count it in my head. Plus you have parrying moves, knives coming at you and then you literally using the side with a twisting martial arts, all the twisting, all the spirals and martial arts spiraling. Yeah, <laughs> pun intended, right? But I like that you can basically defend and if you don't have any other option and you just have a fan, also training with a fan teaches you how to train with a short stick. I heard uh, Master Heron, Gary Hernandez when he was talking to Sensei Emmett in his interview. If you haven't seen that, go watch his interview on Sensei Emmett's channel. But he was talking about the Korean Dongbong, the short stick, which is about this long. It's maybe just a little bit longer, a little bit more around, but the techniques are the same. So the first kind of strike you have with this stick is the same way you would do with a short martial arts stick, like a Kali stick, a scream or knees. And it's as simple as, you know, fast, striking, thinking about your targets, temple, nose, teeth, mouth, jaw, neck. You know, they're coming at you with that punch, smashing the wrist, smashing the hand. And it's a, it's a speed weapon. It's a fast weapon, but it also leverages what you have naturally. It multiplies the force, the power of your hand. And then you have this ability to strike. The second way to strike with this is you hold a little bit just like you would a Kali stick or a, the Dong Gong, the Korean stick, you have a little bit of the stick coming out the bottom. So at this bottom, yeah, anything um, Dan Inosanto makes is worth watching in my opinion. He's got a really cool TED talk too. Coming in, think about temple, eyes, teeth, right? Nose, but smashing, the smashing strike, right? And it comes in, it's very effective. 
It takes all the force of your body force multiplier, all the force of your body and concentrates it in that little piece of wood sticking out and that goes in and you squeeze it, you squeeze it. Yeah, I love the umbrella. Um, you're squeezing it and by squeezing it, you make it more rigid. Now, there's another way to hold it and that is to spin it. It's kind of like a palm spin. I mean, it's palm spin in a while. Like the palm spin you might do with a bow or a joe, but the palm spin, and now you have it in the other position and you would hold it closing here at the very end. And from here, it's a very hard striking weapon. Now the other way, the third way, hold on. If I don't drop my weapon in one of these live streams, I'm not working hard enough, is just that straight in thrusting, thrusting strike. And I'm gonna thrust either using this or again, there's that palm. That's good, I dropped two. This is gonna be good if I get to three. This will be a very lucky video for you. This is gonna be a fortunate, this will be like a good luck charm. This is my birthday video, but the wishes are for you to learn something new and have good luck for the whole year. Yes, in Weldon, your hand, Weldon asked, can an older weak hand do well with these? Absolutely, your hand is going to get stronger little by little by doing this. And where you have weakness now, you're gonna have strength in just you know six to 12 weeks. It's usually how long it takes for your hands to get really strong doing any martial arts weapon. Now you shove that, right? Just think of thrusting. One of the most effective ways to defend yourself is to go straight in. Whether it's a punch, a palm strike to the face, a chop to the neck, or in this case, you don't have to use your hand squeeze it and just thrust. It becomes an extension of your body pushing through. And if you think about what your targets would be, it would be their soft, squishy nose. It doesn't have bones, just cartilage. It would be their eyeball, which is all squishy, right? It would be their teeth, which are going to come out of their throat, their mouth, their throat. That's permanent self. That's going to, only for self-defense. I mean, that can end in the life when you crush that. Not the bone, not the... Uh, that's the sternum, uh, doesn't do much. <laughs> you hit them there in the solar plexus. You know, when the little baby and you could push on there, uh, 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 that's, that's the diaphragm. The diaphragm muscle is in here. You hit that solar plexus with the tip of that, your whole body's stepping in behind it and um, it just puts it into a spasm. It's hard for them to catch their breath. You have these basic striking, slashing, slashing strikes thrusting strikes, and then in the other position, jabbing with that in at an angle, into the ribs, or straight in, coming straight in to the throat. Again, all this squishy stuff in the face. For self-defense, it's effective. So I'm here, he comes up fast, just straight in, and your body's behind it. And the more you practice, the more effective you're gonna be. But the coolest part of the weapon is when you open it, you fan yourself nonchalantly or whatever. And in that case, see how I shifted it into my hand? I was here and then I just kind of naturally. All of this shifting your weapons through your hands will happen without you thinking about it the more you train. But you're gonna get it so that the tip of it here, the end of it here, is just directly in your palm and your thumb. This, and this is right hand. On the left hand, I'm gonna show you how it's different. Um, and I had another fan, I should have brought it so I can show you how to do two fans since we're doing two nunchucks. But from here, your thumb goes on the outer spine, the finger comes the inside, and it's that first one on your thumb side. Now, this is the other side, that's your finger side, that's your thumb side. So your thumb is here, your finger pinches just that first one, and the way you learn that pop is to just open your hand and let it drop with gravity first to close it. Now watch my arm, it doesn't move, but my wrist is going to turn back, like I'm holding a plate. So from here, get it perpendicular, let it open, close it. Now when it's open, you have these spines that you can then block a bladed weapon. And I don't do this for real, these are probably not thick enough to stop a bladed weapon, but if you have the metal version, the Japanese warfare and the Tessen version that Naruto might use in the, uh, the Naruto series or whatever, you can use it like that. Or they also, the airbender. Airbender, 
they have the, um, what are they? The, the Japanese, the, and they walk around the, not the geisha, but they have some, ter what, what is that? Um, the art form of, it's kind of like mime here, but they have music to it. With the white face, the dance. And then, you know, because it's a fantasy show, bam, they pop it out. And their blades in the end, and it's the katana tessin, or the katana war fan. You get the point. But, the, but you want to learn how to use it. In the right hand, your thumb goes here, your finger goes in the first two, you simply open your hand, and then you close it. Now back to the practicality of this as a weapon. Yes, if you don't know much about it, it looks like just a fancy thing. Oh, that's that Kung Fu fighting fan that Jackie Chan used a lot in the Jackie Chan movies, and he's always walking around with a fan. And Yeah, it's cool, but it's not practical. It is extremely practical. I don't know if you're gonna carry it or not because of the way it looks. Some people would love to, some people would feel uh, self-conscious and wouldn't do it. But if someone comes out with a knife and all you have is this, that's simply a stick and you know how to fight with a stick. You slash with a stick, you jab with a stick, and you come with this backhand jab with a stick. And all those are very effective. Force multipliers takes all the power from your body, concentrates it on this tiny little wooden hard spot, and <clears throat> just destruction, right? It's very effective for self-defense. The cool part that you might not do for self-defense is this opening. The opening is meant to create a distraction to uh, break their, interrupt their thoughts, interrupt their thought patterns. And in this position, you go back to that palm spin so that this is here. You slide it down. Now watch this, because people ask me this all the time. No one else will show you this. I'm gonna show you this right now. The Japanese use this technique a lot. Basically, it's just like, you know, you're, they get, bam, they come up, put that right in your face. That's very distracting. It's not meant to take your eye out or anything, though it could. It's a very fast, explosive, popping motion. But the way that you do that, it's right hand still, is that you go in the opposite direction. So before when you opened it, now you're gonna take that first finger, we're gonna go finger side, not thumb side. So we're gonna reverse it. The finger side holds on the outside of the first spine, and then the thumb is just pinching it. And you have to have a good grip. You have to, don't let this go. And don't, don't be like, pop it in someone's face before you have a good understanding of how it works because it'll come flying out of your hand. There's so much force that's created in that motion. So there's the sound of it. There's also the, uh, the power, right, the strike. And then you'll see sometimes that they'll throw. And especially if it has the katana blades, I don't know how effective that is. I'm not advocating this as the best self-defense weapon, although, like since Amitz has the umbrella in Great Britain or in, uh, in Ireland, great tool, self-defense tool. Uh, I like the, the walking cane, effective, taken anywhere. It's a very long piece of wood. Mine are all made out of oak and they're just really, they're devastating for self-defense. This compared to your hand when someone has a knife, great option, <laughs> better than your hand, right? Better than your body. This, someone's bigger, multiple attackers, strike, strike, strike. It's a force multiplier. This gives you a lot of options. So it is, yes, a very effective self-defense tool. But again, back to the coolness of it, you want to be able to, you see how I did that? I know I'm going to open it. So my hand just naturally slides it up. I just saw it happen in the, in the uh, camera. So once again, for review, thumb, your finger, practice opening and closing. And then it's just a matter of, you know, two or three days doing this in a row, each time a little quicker, a little quicker, and then pop. Now, after you pop it open, squeeze. Squeezing it keeps it open, right? It won't close. If your hand's not squeezing, it'll close. For self-defense, it's useless if it's closed in that position. From here, pop it and, and hold it. And then think of blocking down, put it between you and the threat, Blocking up, blocking to the side, blocking to the other side. And then you have all these cool slicing motions. That's the, I said there were three ways to attack. There are really four, especially with that katana, the tessin that has the blades on the end or the Kung Fu fighting fan with the blades on the end. You would slice, slicing angles, slicing across. And then 
if you want to turn it into a form, if you're a martial artist, you want to use it at a competition. So many things that you can do. Use your creativity or reach out to me. I can send you some of the forms that I used to teach and people would take to tournaments and win like a creative weapons division. But it's a fun weapon. I wanted you to see how to do that. Let's talk about the left hand before we put it down and grab the chucks one more time. Now, if you do the same thing on the left as the right, thumb on the first spine, finger behind it, it's not gonna open. So because it's the opposite hand and it's a mirror, you go in the opposite direction. To the bottom, which means that when you palm, palm spin it, there it is, palm spin it to this position for self-defense, and you wanna pop it in that eyeball, you're gonna hold it on the top like you were in the original position on the right hand, but it's just the opposite. And I'll go over that one more time, and then we'll get rid of it, go back to the chucks. To open it with the left hand, grab on the bottom spine, the finger side, not the thumb side. On the right hand, it's thumb side, left hand, finger side. Practice opening, closing, opening. And then the cool thing about this, a good ch challenge for your brain, you put one in each hand, you're holding thumb side, finger side, close. The more you do it, you won't even think about it anymore. Your hands will just naturally know that they need to switch. Practice that, practice again, high block. This is a high block, right? Oh, see, I did the wrong side. Still the wrong side. This is the high block with the left hand, or the right hand. That's a low block. High block, low block. There are, you know, middle blocks. It's all the same thing. Your wrist just turns. When I turn my wrist down, it gets in front of my arm, protects the flesh. Practice closing. Open, close, put in the other hand. Practice opening and closing. And if you want the little dragon there. Oh, thank you very much, Ace Master. I appreciate that for my birthday. I appreciate it anytime, but especially for my birthday. But um, this one's got a dragon. This one's about 20 years old. And look how well they hold up. I've got a whole bunch over there. I've got, uh, but the new ones have a dragon and a phoenix on it. And I don't walk around the mall with these. So I don't really care what they have on them. I just like to teach these as another stick for self-defense. I want you to learn how to use every kind of stick imaginable. And then if you have a bag or a stack of tires, practice your strikes. If you don't, practice in the air. Oh, always come across all of the things you can do with the nunchucks or with the collie sticks or with a machete or a knife you do with your fighting fan. The only different thing is that you have some extra things to do. Now, back to the nunchucks. We talked about basic strikes down and up. We did the triangle, and I said I was gonna show you how to do that famous Bruce Lee move. I can get it there, where he pops it under his arm, squeezes it, and then releases it for self-defense into the guy's face. And again, Naruto's uh, animated series, Mighty Guy also does that move. I've seen, I think any anytime you see nunchucks pop up in a TV show or the movies, you're gonna see this and you're gonna see that. It's just such a simple, cool, easy move, but I want you to learn how to do it. Start with it in the right hand and I'm gonna show you two things. One is the forward orbital. You know how to do this, this is our warm up. Remember we did orbital, orbital inside, outside. You put it together and you have your figure eight. So you're just gonna do the outer orbital. And then the second motion, before we go under the armpit, is this, down and back. One, two, it's as simple as that. One, two, and I want you to practice one, two. On the third one, close your arm. Simply drop your elbow, that's all it is. But get used to this motion. One, two, on the third one, pop it under, then do it in two. One, two, then do it in one, one, one. Then add the orbital, because it looks cooler. Here's complexity, one, two, catch. Do a down and up, spin, spin, catch. Do a spin down, spin up, arm, orbital, 
catch. Now you've just done like four different tricks or techniques with the nunchuck. You built some complexity. Now you're freestyling. You wanna learn how to freestyle with the nunchucks or nunchaku freestyle? Basic nunchucks freestyle is putting together the basic techniques. So let's review what I just did. So let's add one. Let's do a Bruce Lee triangle, do a couple orbitals, spin down, spin up, there's your vertical strike. Go up, up and back on the front arm, go back to an orbital, catch it, and then this from here, all I'm doing, get it in the right position, is I'm squeezing this arm against the body to create tension here, and then at the same time, I'm pushing my wrist away, creates tension there, squeeze, 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 boom. And if you watch the Bruce Lee movies, this is where the two chucks come in. He's gonna do some things with both chucks. He, I, think he, I, I think this is an actual routine. He did this, and then he did a, maybe a cross and back. I don't remember if he did that. Let's say, let's say he did this, and then he went down, he spun up, he went to the arms, he did the orbitals, and then he caught under his arms, and then he looks around like, who wants it for self-defense? Well, it's a movie, right? So, you know, who, who, want, who wants the end of the chuck comes smacking into your face for self-defense? That's what's very effective. So with your two chucks, do that with me. You just go down and up, do a Bruce Lee triangle. You can alternate them. That looks cool. Do a couple orbitals, orbital down, orbital up. Go over the upper arm, back and forth. Go back to the outside, catch them, and then either at the same time or catch them, one, two. And now you're, now you're fighting just like Bruce Lee in the movies, especially Game of Death or Into the Dojo, Into the Dragon. Does really uh, great. And again, like Sensei Emmett was saying earlier, Bruce Lee's doing basic stuff. He's, and then he's on the ground. Remember there's a whole scene where he's surrounded by the karate students and he's flopping over, he smacked this guy. And he smacked that guy. He smacked. Someone asked me, can you teach me how to do the fighting on the ground like Bruce Lee did with the nunchucks? And I said, yeah, lie on the ground and then smack that guy and smack that guy. Because that's all that is. There's, there's nothing there. There's no technique. It's just using it as a flail, which is what it really is. It's just a flail. A flail meaning a stick connected to a stick with a string. Or in this case, a chain. All right. There's one more. Oh, I know what it was. I want you to see how to go from one hand to the other hand with the nunchucks. This is very Naruto, Mighty Guy, Rock Lee, um, or Bruce Lee. This is the Bruce Lee hand transfer. I call it Bruce Lee, but we've all been doing it way before even Bruce Lee. I wasn't because he's old. I was dead. I was even born when he died, I think. No, I think it was a young kid. Under and behind the arm. My point is, Dan and Asato, everybody else of that generation, for a couple hundred years, were using nunchucks before Bruce Lee. But we all like to say the Bruce Lee this, the Bruce Lee that, because he made it famous. That was his good. That was his greatest contribution to martial arts. We all got into martial arts because of two people, one or the other, or both. For me, it was both. It was Bruce Lee because he was super cool. But for me, it was way more because of the Karate Kid. Uh, Ralph Macchio, Danielson, right? Danielson, uh, Mr. Miyagi. Everybody needed a Mr. Miyagi in their life, especially in the 70s. Everybody needs a Mr. Miyagi in 2021. We all need Mr. Miyagi right now more than ever. Pat Morita, rest in place. Peace, rest in peace, right? Anyway, so we're coming. Now we get Scott Adkins. Cool, great with the nunchucks, but he's not Mr. Miyagi. And that's not a criticism. I'm just saying he's not. All right, so you reach into the front of the body, and this hand, watch what I do with this hand. This is the chuck in the right hand. I just bring my arm perpendicular to the ground, and see where my head is, and my back is? The chuck is out here to the side, so that I don't hit myself. If I bring, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it, because these hurt. If I bring it here, the chuck has to hit me in the head. So if you're ever hitting yourself in the head, it's because of where you're putting your hand. Control your hand, you won't hit yourself in the head. So from here, just like that. Take the other hand, reach across, 
you're going to want to reach behind. Don't do that. Reach and cross. Let it go. That's that reverse angular strike. Reach across. And now you're doing the Bruce Lee, mighty guy. Which um, Ninja Turtle was it? I always forget. Donatello, right? It's Donatello the Ninja Turtle with the nunchucks. And again, those are all fictional characters, but this is a real weapon. And it's very effective for self-defense. It's not, because of that reason, it's not legal everywhere. But I was told recently it's illegal in Texas now. It used to never be legal in Texas, now it is. There are far more dangerous weapons out there that you can get than the nunchucks. So it makes sense to me it's illegal. All right, now what do you do? You put them together. Let's say Bruce Lee triangle, a couple orbitals on the arm, spin down, spin up, go into your armpit squeeze, pop them, switch hands, and then do something over here. Maybe a Bruce Lee triangle again, down and up, over the arm, outer orbital, catch, pop them, switch hands. And then the last time we did this, I put the hand on the opposite side of the face, opposite side, this left hand, right side, the back of the hand here, because your palm is going to block your face and allow the chucks to transfer into that other side. So this is just a bonus trick or technique. Hand here, bring it around your head, and then pop it out. Oh, one of the best Bruce Lee moves all the time. Let's do this first. Go behind the head, bring it out, put the hand on the other side, bring it out. If you put the hand on the wrong side, you're gonna smash your face, make sure it's on the correct side. Opposite hand, opposite cheek. The last thing from this position, you would see in a lot of those movies, and I've seen it, Mighty got, oh, the new movie that's coming out, the Mandarin Marvel movie, based on the Mandarin uh, superhero, I guess. And the guy uses the chucks, uses the double chucks. And specifically uses the double chucks in the reverse grip. Like this, kind of like Ahsoka Tano from the Star Wars. She's got that double uh, bladed lightsaber that's separated. And she goes from a positive grip to a negative grip, back to a positive grip. And then in the new Mandarin, what's the Mandarin guy's name? Always Xi Ching or Ching Si, Xi Ching, something like that. And he's Chi um, Sing Xing. Anyway, we'll do that in the next video. I wanna show you how to do that because I think that's a super cool move. But back to the Bruce Lee move, mighty guy move from here. You can bring it out. All it is, left hand's on the bottom, right hand's on the top, pushing against each other, pulling away from each other, creating tension. Use the tension to start to pull with your bottom hand, left hand. Let the right hand turn in, and without relieving that tension, push out. Now, this chain, especially a chain, uh, but, but even the, the string weapon is designed, can be used to block an attack from a punch, a kick, what they're kicking your head, a punch, uh, a stick, a sword, by deflecting to the side. You wouldn't stop the blade of the sword as it comes down, you would push it off the center line, and then you can either, if it's a long weapon, throw it and catch it on the other side so that now it's wrapped around the sword or the knife or sometimes their wrist. And think of a nutcracker. You have the tension from these two things. See if I can. I don't want to mess up my. Here. This thing's 20 years old. If I mess it up, I won't be too sad. I don't want to mess up that other pair of nunchucks. Just because I want to do more double nunchuck stuff. But from here, when you start to push those toward each other, and that's his that's his wrist for self-defense or her wrist for self-defense that's just gonna shatter the bones, right? That's, that's so much force, leverage, pushing against each other. And if it's a knife or a weapon, it allows you to create kind of like a wrench and then rip it out of their hand. So this, again, a fantasy weapon or TV weapon, movie weapon, but it's a real self-defense tool, blocking, snapping, right? Blocking, pulling away. Throw it out of there. 
finish the fight for self-defense. So grab the single nunchuck, the double nunchuck, or grab a fan, practice with me a little bit, watch this video a couple times. Thanks again for that birthday gift. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to you. It's gonna be your birthday sometime this year. I hope 2021 is a fantastic year for all of us. I'll see you guys in